Hey guys, welcome to the channel and welcome to today's video where we have a, a quick look at the Modify PP2K which I know I'm a bit late to the party with this one uh, it's been out a few months now but they're not exactly easy to get hold of they're in short supply and I've wanted one of these ever since I saw them unveiled at the MOA in 2019 in September so this is uh, quite an exciting one I've really wanted one of these for a long time and uh, yeah let's get into the box and let's have a look at it okay so this is how your pp2k will arrive when it comes in a nice plastic box and i also got some of the accessories so we've got the flashlight and i've got the suppressor uh, i also ordered a couple of mags as well some 50 round mags so let's open this up and have a look exactly what you get so it's actually a really nice case, I really like that. And then when you open it up, it's actually got the uh, Pickstar foam, so you can actually pull it out to the shape of the gun to, to make it fit in there a bit nicer. And then you can probably fit in some of your accessories as well. So, what you get, one magazine, and the replica itself, thank you. And here it is, so let's get this out the way and have a proper look at it. So here it is guys, the PP2K from our friends at Modify. Now, this is quite an interesting uh, little replica. I like this a lot. Um, it's basically the Russian take on an MP7, I suppose would be a, a simplistic way of looking at it. Um, it's a compact submachine gun, the folding stock, and it's barely bigger than a pistol in many ways, a big pistol. So we've got a Mark 23, there's not much um, size difference in this uh, to the Mark 23, or at least in this form, there isn't. And what you've got with this is a nice steel folding stock. It's really nice quality. You pull it up, swing it round, locks into place. You've got a aluminium charging handle, steel outer barrel, and a front sight post. Uh, we've got this funky little curved trigger in there as well. It's quite nice and a polymer base and a aluminium receiver. And this has got a couple of fairly unique features about it. Uh, on this side, we've got our fire selector. Not that unique. <laughs> uh, typical Russian, full auto and then single shot. Just like you'd get with uh, an AK where you've got full auto, then single shot at the bottom. Um, very typical Russian layout. We've got a little sling, um, sling mount at the back here. And we've got this button, which I'll show you in a minute. We've got our mag release here and our slightly unusual ambidextrous charging handle. So yeah, it is ambidextrous because it flicks to both sides, but it is a slightly unusual idea. But it works and it is an unusual shape of submachine gun. It really is with this angular front end and front handhold front grip it really is pretty unusual we have our ejection port there which does operate when fired because of course this is a gas blowback it's not an AEG now I say there's some slightly unusual um, features with this one of them is the actual stock now you can take the stock out completely so you press this button at the back that I just mentioned and you can pull it out and there you go it's it's free and you've got this weird thing where you can stick a 50 round spare mag in the back and use that as a stock. I have no idea why anyone would want to do that. It looks uncomfortable, it wobbles around, and it seems pretty silly to me. But there you go, you can do it if you want, or you can run it without anything at all and have it as a pistol sort of setup. Again, sort of defeats the object of having it, but yeah, there you go, you can do that if you wish. Now, one thing I'll say, when this comes out of the box, the stock does wobble a little bit in this mounting point, and the magazine's even more so. So you'll notice I've just put a little bit of electrical tape on the side there and a bit of Velcro on the top. And when it slots in, it's actually pretty tight now. I get no wobble around on there at all. I'd recommend doing that if it bothers you. There is literally no movement in that at all now. It's nice and solid. So that's a definite recommendation is to just put a little bit of Velcro on top or some electrical tape just to pack it out a bit, just take up that tolerance a little bit. So this replica comes available with several accessories. And really, I think the accessories make this thing. They really do add to it. So I thought, you know what? Let's just get all of them and uh, fit it on there. So we have a suppressor and we have 
a flashlight. Now I personally like to run a flashlight on all of my submachine guns and assault rifles because when you're going from daylight into a, a building you often get dark areas, shadows, things like that and a flashlight is just useful just to pop it on or if you're playing in a CQB environment where it's dark you in some, some places you can't play without them. So it really does make sense and I like to have one available. Now fortunately for these they come when you order them, you've got the option to get the proprietary flashlight to go with it. And I thought we'd get hold of that and have a look at it to see if it's actually any good. So this is the PP2K flashlight. If we open it up, I have already had this out and set it up. And this is your flashlight. And you'll see this featured in pretty much all <laughs> pictures of the PP2K, um, or the real steel version at least. And it comes with a push button on the back and it also comes with a pressure switch there. Now, one thing I'll say about this, when you mount it into the mounting bracket, it is loose. So remember, keep that electrical tape close by and just wrap it round until you get a nice interference fit and it won't move at all. It's absolutely solid. So it's an easy fix. For this to go in, you'll notice there's a catch on the back here. You literally slot it in, push that in and give it a good shove. There you go, and that is locked in place. And now you can mount your pressure pad wherever you want. And the actual torch itself, the actual flashlight, is actually really powerful. The flash point is actually powered by these lithium uh, CR123A batteries. So not the cheapest things around, but they do give good power. So that's, that's what I use in this, this flashlight. Now to fit the suppressor, there's actually a small grub screw underneath the flash hide on the front here. This is still flash hider, so you need to remove that. And then it's a counterclockwise thread and just screw it off and uh, stick the suppressor on, which I'll do now. So this is the suppressor. It is unique to the PP2K and you can tell from this little tab that sits at the back here, so sprung loaded tab. Um, it is foam filled with sections of foam, small rings of foam, and they do go the full length of the suppressor. And it fits the same way as, as any suppressor really. You get it so the tab is on this side. You'll see there's a small pin there to hold it. It's a 14 millimeter counterclockwise thread. So technically there's a few suppressors you could fit on here. You then move this around so the tab sits on top of the pin and you just hold it down and tighten it up. And there you go. And that is rock solid. There's no wobbling or anything like you'd have a bit of wobble on the MP7 suppressors, but there's absolutely nothing on there. That's absolutely rock, rock solid. So this is the green gas mag, and I believe you can also get a CO2 version, but the green gas is perfect for what I use it for. Um, CO2 may be a little bit hot, so uh, yeah, certainly in the summer. So yeah, I use the green gas, not tried the CO2, so I'm not sure, but um, yeah, let's get some gas in it and we'll put a few shots through. So there it is, and what we've got, uh, we've got iron sights, we've got our front post and we've got a little iron sight at the back here, which you may or may not be able to see, probably not actually. Um, but that works pretty, you know, <laughs> pretty weak really. You can't really get, yeah, I suppose you can get down behind it, but it's a, it is quite a low profile sight. So really you want to make use of this Picatinny rail and, and do it properly. But let's fire a few shots through it. I'll put some BBs in here. I've got a target over there. And this is where things start to get a little bit odd, which is a typical kind of, um, I know it's not actually made by the Russians this, but it's got that Russian feel about it where it does things a little bit different because once you put the magazine in, it's on safety, you can't cock it, it will not play. You've actually got to take it off safe into fire, then you can cock it and reset the lever. Remember to reset the lever at the end here if you don't want it flapping around all over the place. Okay, so single fire. And we got full auto. And we're out of BBs. So one thing I'll say, it does use a bit of gas. The mags are a pain to fill. Uh, they do leak like crazy as you're filling them, but no different to a Tokyo Marine mag where they don't have the uh, non, non leaking fill, fill valves. They're a pain in the backside. Um, that seemed, unless it was icing up, seems to be getting a bit lower. No, it's still got some gas in. Hmm. No, very little gas left. So yeah, it does eat the gas up pretty quickly on these. I'm not convinced that that mag's not leaking either. But operations-wise, it's fantastic. It feels great, really snappy trigger. Um, feels good and the full auto is pretty quick. 
<clears throat> it's got a nice burst to it. So all in all, it feels really, really lovely to use. I like the, the mechanism. It does take a bit of getting used to, having to cock it while it's in uh, fire rather than in safety, but it's something you'll get used to. And also when it locks back after you've finished firing, it does this thing where it sort of locked back and it's halfway along and then you take the mag out and it drops forwards. Um, not quite used to that yet. So if I show you what I mean by that. So rather than having a bolt release like you would on a typical Western sort of style gun like the MP7, there's actually nothing here and the bolt stays back and then you change the mag out and it pulls forwards. And then when you put the new mag in, you then got to recock it, ready to go again. Um, so a little bit unusual. now. I'll be honest, I've not used this much. This is straight out of the box pretty much other than just fiddling around with it. So I haven't quite worked out if there's a way around that yet or whether that's just a feature of this, this gun. But it does seem fairly unusual. So interestingly, it will cock in safe when the mag's empty, which is slightly strange. So I've just refilled the mag. Let's try it again. Oh, so it does cock now on safety. Work that out. So yeah, it's on safe. Mag's empty. So, I've just filled that up. I don't think that's gonna take, I think you literally got one fill, one dump out of one fill. Now that might just be this mag. It may be, it is getting a bit cold, so it might be freezing, but really it's running out of gas. The reservoir seems really small on this. It doesn't seem to hold a lot of gas. So that may be something to do with it, I don't know. Now this is where the problems sort of lie with this. Yeah, that's, that's actually, no, let's try that again. Let's put the mag in. Oh no, it's still locking back. So we may have a little bit more, but the mags are where we come to an issue here with actually skirmishing this. And that is that they're really not that available at the moment. I ordered this in October, the end of October, I think. No, sorry, no, it wasn't. End of November, maybe. Maybe a little bit before that. And this is actually a Christmas present of my girlfriend. And we got it ordered. And middle to, yeah, about the middle of December it arrived. It was on pre-order. Um, all the parts came with it. The 50 round mags I'm still waiting for. So. Everything's a little bit short supply at the moment, which is a bit frustrating. So realistically, I can't skirmish this at the moment because if you're gonna get, I'm, I've ordered two 50 round mags to start with. Realistically, you want five, I think, because when using gas blowback, you wanna have, you don't wanna be fiddling around with BBs and gas in the middle of a match. What you wanna do is have enough mags that you can swap it out and then go back to safe zone afterwards and refill. So you need at least five mags for this to make it skirmishable. And that's a bit of a problem at the moment. It's a shame because ergonomically, it's absolutely fantastic. It feels great to hold. Uh, it feels great to find. It makes an amazing sound. I don't know if it comes across on the on the actual uh, mic, but it sounds fantastic when you fire. It's got a real snap to it, and it feels it feels like you're actually feeling shooting something uh, interesting. And I really, really like this. I like the feel of it. It feels very high quality. The polymer is absolutely lovely. It's really nicely done, nicely finished. So we've got a nice PP2K symbol in the uh, pistol grip and uh, it's really well finished off. All nice bits on there. Now, it can be made extremely compact, folding it down. And you can also change out the sling loop for a specialist kind of um, attachment so you can actually holster it if you want to so it makes it a little bit more usable in that sense in the fact it's easier to carry if you're using it as a sidearm personally I think this is more of a primary um, I thought about it as a, a secondary for sniping but in reality I don't think it's um, easy enough to use for that I think you need something that's a little more easy just to pull out of a holster and start firing, whereas this takes a little bit more involvement. So I don't think it's ideal for a sniper secondary unless you're gonna run it as your, your primary and then just have a sniper rifle on your back. That could work quite well. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely, for me, I'd use this as a primary for CQB or even, even more elongated matches, but where you're getting in as close as you can. I actually think it'd be good for that in the same way as you can do exactly the same with the MP7. Now the MP7 is one of my favorite replicas of all and this is actually slightly smaller and the the Tokyo Marie MP7 that I use is already 10% smaller than the real thing so this is super compact there's no two ways about it take the suppressor off 
even more so. The suppressor does dampen the sound very slightly, but not to a massive extent. Um, it does dampen it a little bit, but it's certainly more for the look than the actual use of a, a suppressor. Now, when you open the box, you do get a few extras. You get a couple of patches uh, from Modify, and you also get your manual. So it's a normal sort of manual, just telling you the, how to use it. Nothing particularly special about that, but it is nicely done, nicely printed. So great job there, and it also shows all the internals and how they fit together. So actually a really nice job there, Modify. I'm impressed with that. It's, uh, it's a good job. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear my bench because it's an absolute dump next door in my little workshop. So I'm going to clear the bench off and we're going to strip it down and have a look exactly what's inside. Give it a bit of a grease, a bit of a clean, uh, get any of the factory gunk out of there. But uh, so far, I'm really liking this. Right, so we're going to take this down now. Now, one thing I didn't talk about earlier was the hop up. Um, to actually adjust the hop, you'll see there's a hole here underneath the trigger, underneath the trigger guard, and it goes through behind the trigger and that is actually your hop adjustment so you have to use a long allen key that comes in the box with the gun so not it's not that big a deal really but you wouldn't want to lose your allen key in the middle of a, a game but then once your hop's set you shouldn't have to mess with it um, if anyone's used a, a Tokyo Mori MP7 you'll know it's next to impossible to adjust the hop with just your finger anyway you always need some kind of tool or something to get into the um, the actual ejection port to adjust the hop so this is, this is no big deal either, really, for this type of gun. I don't think it's an issue. So what we'll do, we'll take the accessories off and we'll take this down. So take this torch off. You literally just push this tab at the back there, push it, and then pull it out, which I'm going to do off camera because it takes a bit of force. And there we go, it's out. So to take this out, there's a lever underneath here. You literally push that forwards towards the end of the barrel and you pull the front up and out it comes. Uh, when you do it, just be careful because you have got your spring in the back here which will want to push out. And that leaves us with the internal. So it's very different to a lot of what you see out and about in the airsoft world. Pistol wise, it actually looks quite different in here. But uh, a lot of steel parts from what I can see are all nicely greased. Although it would be nice to clean it and get some fresh grease in there, which is something I always like to do. Uh, we can see our trigger mechanism at the front here, which actually runs off a bar, which runs along this side of the gun. There's a bar going back to the sear. So if we switch that into auto or full auto, you can actually see it operate at the back here. Cool. So this is our receiver, or our upper receiver, if you like. Now it's a bit loose now. It hasn't got any tension on there. So what you'll notice when this spring is uh, not under pressure, you'll notice it actually affects the front here. So if I release that, this goes all floppy. So it actually holds that in place as well. So if we pull this out like so, we'll see it's actually a, a captivated spring. Okay, that's interesting. So that must screw onto there. So that's our, our recoil spring, I guess. This is our chamber. There you go, so that pulls out of there. And that is your nozzle. It's very, very much like a, a pistol nozzle. Nothing really different about that. And it sits in this carrier, which has got wheels on it to help with the uh, smooth action. And this is your charging handle. Now I say wheels on there, they're not bearings as such. I suppose they could be classed as bearings actually. Um, but they're not like ball bearings. It literally is just a set of small wheels that's helping it run along the inside of the receiver. And you'll see the marks on the inside of the receiver where it's been going back and forth, but that's all good. There's also Allen keys, or Allen screws underneath here uh, to take the top rail off if you wish. Now this is our hop unit and uh, obviously our inner barrel. And we've got some kind of blue hop rubber in there at the moment and i'm not sure it will be a mod well it will be a modified part so that's cool so if you want to take the hop unit out it's really easy you just undo these two screws either side two grub screws maybe take them out i think just be very careful not to lose these guys so that would be a bad day in fact let's put them in a pot and two and then out comes your barrel and your hop unit. 
and this is your hop adjustment right there see it's actually not a bad design um because it gives it uh it's not lot sort of canting to one way or the other it does pull directly down on top of the hop unit this is a plastic adjuster but yeah i'm sure somebody will make aftermarket parts for these but i, I can't see any problem with it i did actually before i took it apart took it for a shoot in the garden and at 20 meters um i was getting a, a decent grouping of like this so i don't think there's any real issue there it seems to be working just fine so just measuring the barrel it seems to be around 605 it's not even necessarily called tie ball it's an aluminium barrel um, it's very lightweight and it's got this uh, teflon coating on it uh, the hop unit has got a uh, modified blue hot rubber in there it looks like a silicon hot rubber and if i operate it yeah it's just a it's a standard sort of uh, knob that you would expect so i'd like to actually have a look to see what kind of um what kind of hop it is to see if we could put uh, something pretty fancy in there because I reckon this could be a bit of a beast okay and there is your hot rubber now interesting that looks actually like a maybe a proprietary hop so let's compare that to something like a maple leaf <clears throat> and you can see actually it's not that different this 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 maple leaf has actually been modified no no it is actually a normal uh, sized VSR style hop so that's interesting so we can put different ones in but interestingly this has ridges on to help you locate it so uh, yeah that's unusual that is uh, very much a mm, that is a proprietary sort of area there where you've got these ridges on the actual hop rubber but that doesn't matter I mean uh, you can still put a different hop on there if you really wish but it actually looks a really nice good quality hop rubber i can't see any issues with it so let's just pop it off and have a, a look at the inside so really interesting guys this is actually a really decent looking hot rubber i mean it's it's obviously it's modifies own hot rubber but it's got uh it's almost a little bit like the uh looking at the inside it's got that triangular uh, knob which is a little bit like um what you'd get with a a what would i say uh, maple leaf so it's a little bit it's actually it is a different design to a maple leaf but it has that same idea so you have a, a groove down the center and a pointed um knob which is supposed to put it give it a better straighter trajectory and a more consistent backspin so it's actually a decent hot rubber i don't think i'm going to change this anyway it looks okay to me now the, the actual knob side of it where the pressure comes down this is a little bit different this is uh basically just a, a flat so it's acting almost like the kind of uh cut down uh flat flat hot knob almost but it's just plastic and it's not the neatest of things but it'll obviously work uh so yeah really interesting now, modifications wise i'm not sure what you could do to it at the moment i'd have to do a little bit more research a little you know get a few more ideas about it um because i don't think you could fit a conventional nub in there at the moment so probably well you could but you'd have to modify this actually so you'd probably have to take i don't know a millimeter off there uh, to get something to fit in maybe work it may not work i don't think it'd be worth trying at the moment uh, one thing we need to be aware of is which way around that goes which isn't that way it's that way yeah so actually not sure it may be worth leaving it alone and waiting until somebody actually bring something out for these uh, if you want to modify the hop but honestly i don't think you need to the performance with this so far has been yeah from what i can see more than adequate from sort of short to mid-range um engagement so i don't think you need to worry too much about that um if anything the only thing i'd, I'd look at doing here is making sure the air seal is perfect i really don't think there's anything else you need to do with it um the barrel you could put that would probably be a better upgrade than changing the hop actually would be to if you want to put a, uh, a tight ball barrel in okay then guys so we've stripped it down we've put it back together again um we've greased the inside put some nice high quality uh silicon grease in there on the piston oh, sorry on the o-ring for the uh piston or the um cylinder 
um, put a bit of lube on the mechanism that runs it backwards and forwards and nice and smooth a little bit quieter if anything so I put a little bit of grease on the mechanism where the moving parts touch each other so yeah all pretty nice so what we'll do I've put another load of BBs and some more gas in the mag take a couple of shots make sure it's all good stick it on single yep no problem at all so what we'll do is we'll chrono it and see what we're getting so using 0.2 gram BBs, it's not the easiest thing to see on the camera, but I can see from here. So let's go. 312, to 79 as it's dropping as the gas is being used up see if we can't get a uh, rate of fire and it's out so no we can't we're all out so what are my thoughts on the pp2k it's really really nicely put together it's been given a bit of thought um it's really well built actually i love the polymer i love the mechanism inside it looks good it looks like it's been put together with a bit of care um the mechanism feels good it operates nicely uh, you know there's nothing not to like it's a bit unusual to use i'll be honest uh, it feels a bit odd the way the, the mechanism operates that's not the way the a fault of the gun it's just the way it operates uh, one thing you've got to be careful of is the trigger you don't want to be giving it too hard a squeeze um, or forcing the bolt or anything like that you need to get used to the operation of it but other than that i absolutely love it the, the real thing comes down to whether you can get the mags. Um, like I say, I, personally, I'd like to run five mags, uh, 50 round mags for a skirmish. And if you can do that, then no problem at all. It's really nice. It's, the ergonomics of it are fantastic, uh, especially with the flashlight on there. It keeps out the way. Honestly, it's a brilliant little gun. Fantastic little gun. I absolutely love it. And I really like how well it's built. But I do think we need to wait for the availability of the parts really need the mags and everything else to really finish this off and if modify can knock those out and can bring them out in big enough quantities then they've got an absolute winner because as soon as people start to use these and start to get used to them and maintain them as well because then it's, it's nice to maintain i've noticed how well and how tight the tolerance is no wobble in this in this charging handle uh or sorry in the, the actual bolt a uh, little bit in the front there but that's normal because it's, it's like a sprung loaded thing I think it's fantastic the, the fire select on the side is positive and it's got a nice feel to it all those kind of ergonomics make a difference to something like this and i think it's a great little replica and if you can get hold of one and if you can get the mags and everything else then i'd say go for it because there's uh, there's no reason not to like it it's got some upgradability about it the the actual standard hot rubber seems really good quality to me uh, I can't see any problems with that. You know, go for it. it. It's really nice. So, guys, that was the PP2K gas blowback from Modify. Uh, cracking little gun. Absolutely brilliant. And it's going to be uh, a popular one in my collection, I think. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting out, getting some mags and getting out on the field and actually using the thing. I have got that um, L96 floating around. It's turned into a bit of a nightmare that has because it turns out that Sima actually went down the route of making lots of proprietary parts for it. So it's actually not half the upgrade parts I've got, if not pretty much all of them, don't fit that particular L96. I've been caught out with that one, it's fair to say, and I don't mind admitting it. Um, but that's the way it goes, that's airsoft for you. But I'm not giving up on the challenge of trying to make a cheaper L96. We'll still do that, but we'll probably use a different one because I can see that I'm going to have to make my own parts for the Simer, which is something that a lot of people haven't got access to because I'm going to have to use my lathe and my milling machine to make parts for it to actually upgrade it, which is a bit of a pain in the backside, if I'm honest, and it's a complete time soak. Um, so yeah, we may have to do something else with that. Uh, yeah, best laid plans and all that, eh? So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, keep chatting away in the comments if you've had any of these if any of you guys out there have had one of these 
Let me know what you think of it, how it's performed, how you're getting on with it. Um, I got this one from Longbow Airsoft, uh, for anyone who wants to know. And uh, yeah, great guys. Ordered it. They said, look, it's in customs at the moment. It's on pre-order. Absolutely fine. As soon as it came through, um, they sent it to me. So absolutely brilliant. Um, love this thing. Like I say, this was actually a, a Christmas present from my girlfriend. She got for me. And uh, yeah, I finally got hold of it. See you again, guys. Bye-bye.